Good morning and welcome to this service of morning prayer on the 14th Sunday after Pentecost. The opening sentence this morning is, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O oh, come, let us worship. O oh, Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Jubilate, Psalm 100. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. I brought you on location again today. Um, Liso Lighthouse is behind me and, and this location was specially requested by my dad Glenn because Reverend Pam grew up not far from here. So today's reading is from James chapter 1 verses 17 to 27. Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from God our Father who created all the lights in the heavens. He never changes or casts a shifting shadow. He chose to give birth to us by giving us his true word, and we, out of all creation, became his prized possession. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives, and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. For as you listen to the word and don't obey, it is like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says, and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. If you claim to be religious, but don't control your tongue, you are fooling yourself and your religion is worthless. Pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now for Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth be moved, and though the mountains be toppled into the depths of the sea. 
Though its waters rage and foam, and though the mountains tremble at its tumult, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be overthrown. God shall help her at the break of day. The nations make much ado and the kingdoms are shaken. God has spoken and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Come now and let's look upon the works of the Lord. What awesome things he has done on earth. It is he who makes war to cease in all the world. He breaks the bow, bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. Be still then and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our stronghold. Let us pray. Lord, our strength, your power is for peace, and the pride of your mighty acts secures the city of the humble. Teach us to put our trust in your salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke Chapter 8, verses 45 to 56. Who touched me? Jesus asked. Everyone denied it, and Peter said, Master, this whole crowd is pressing up against you. But Jesus said, Someone deliberately touched me, for I felt healing power go out from me. When the woman realized that she could not stay hidden, she began to tremble and fell to her knees in front of him. The whole crowd heard her explain why she had touched him and that she had been immediately healed. Daughter, he said to her, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. While he was still speaking to her, a messenger arrived from the home of Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. He told him, your daughter is dead. There's no use troubling the teacher now. But when Jesus heard what had happened, he said to Jairus, don't be afraid, just have faith and she will be healed. When they arrived at the house, Jesus wouldn't let anyone go in with him except Peter, John, James, and the little girl's father and mother. The house was filled with people weeping and wailing. But he said, stop the weeping. She isn't dead. She's only asleep. The crowd laughed at him because they all knew she had died. Then Jesus took her by the hand and said in a loud voice, my child, get up. And at that moment, her life returned and she immediately stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were overwhelmed, but Jesus insisted that they not tell anyone what had happened. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Today, Simon Peter tells us about two very special healings. Listen carefully, and again, let's see what we can apply to our daily journey. As we got out of the boat, the crowd started to advance. They'd been waiting to welcome us. Jesus calmly walked towards them, smiling. I was wondering what he was going to teach and who would be healed today. Someone was hurrying towards us ahead of the crowd. It was Jairus, the leader of the synagogue. He looked so distressed. He fell down on his knees in front of us. My only daughter is dying. Please come and heal her. I know that you can. Jesus helped him up, eyes full of compassion. 
told him not to worry. He would go with them. The crowd is packed so closely around us, it was hard to move forward. Suddenly Jesus stopped and said, who touched me? We were being jostled on all sides and I said, Master, we're in the middle of a crowd. Many are touching you. But he had that special look deep in his eyes that we saw when he was healing someone. And he said, I felt a power leave me. I looked around. I had no idea how we would know who touched him. I noticed a woman nearby. Her face was tear stained, but it was glowing. And I could see an aura surrounding her. She fell to the ground and said, I touched you. I've been sick with a discharge of blood for 12 years, which made me unclean and no one could heal me. I touched the hem of your robe and immediately I knew I was healed. This touch made Jesus ceremonially unclean, but he looked at her with the gentle eyes, compassion just pouring out of him. And he called her daughter. And he said, your faith has healed you. While he was talking to her, someone else approached to tell Jairus not to bother the teacher as his daughter had died. He started to cry and I felt so sad. Jesus told him not to worry, just believe and his daughter would be saved. What on earth did he mean? No one knew. But we all started to walk to Jairus's house. When we arrived, everyone was crying. Our master said, stop crying. She's only sleeping. But everyone laughed at him. They thought he was crazy. I wondered myself what he was thinking. Was it because he'd been delayed by the woman that he didn't want to acknowledge that she had died? He called James, John, me, and Jairus and his wife to go with him into the room. The parents were weeping. He got close to the bed and took the little girl's hand. All he said was, little girl, get up. I noticed I was holding my breath. She got up and she began to breathe normally. I couldn't believe my eyes. There was a peace filling the room. Jairus and his wife were so happy, laughing through their tears. And Jesus said, give her something to eat. And then he said those words, don't tell anyone. It seemed he didn't want people to know that he had brought a young girl back to life. I've struggled with this don't tell anyone before. I know he didn't want the crowd spreading sensational gossip or increasing with onlookers only interested in the excitement. Also, the scribes and Pharisees are already wondering about him, who he is, and they're questioning his healing, especially on the Sabbath. I suspect they're collecting evidence making ammunition to attack him and undermine his popularity. Jesus didn't want to give them any more information to add. Let's leave Simon's story here for today and reflect on what we have heard. I love the account of the woman pushing through the crowd to touch the hem of his robe. She had so much faith. She believed that if she just touched his robe, she would be healed. On days when I'm struggling, I picture myself forcing my way through the crowd to touch his robe. Let me explain. We were attending a clergy conference on Zoom when the leader showed a picture of a crowd of refugees with their baggage on their backs. She asked us to reflect on it. As I meditated, 
I pictured the crowds around the disciples as in this gospel story. Imagine myself among the people, making my way towards Jesus. When I got to him, it was as though we were the only two people there. And he said, come to me, you who are wearied and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your soul. It's a powerful image and one I can come back to anytime I need peace and inspiration. As I share this with you, it's my hope that on difficult days, you will be able to picture yourself touching his robe, looking into his eyes. And in that way, you will find comfort and strength. If this happens to you, please share the story and the comfort you received, just as I'm sharing it with you. Even though Jesus in this account says, don't tell anyone, that request was just for a short time, because in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, he told them, go into the world and preach the good news to everyone. We are to share the good news about our Lord, what he means to us and how he helps and comforts us so that others will get to know him and be encouraged on their daily journey. Amen. Let us confess our faith as we say, Hear, O Israel. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. We come now to our prayer time. I invite you to bring your thanksgivings and your concerns about everything going on around you to the feet of our gracious God, who says, when you call upon me and come and pray to me, I will hear you. Gracious God, we thank you for the gift of this new day, for our lives, our families, and for your presence surrounding us. We pray for peace and reconciliation in our troubled world, especially today for those suffering in Afghanistan, for those who are fleeing sanctuary, for those who are staying safety for those who are fighting peace, for those whose hearts are breaking comfort, for those who see no future, hope. We pray for the leaders of the nations, for our leaders, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Premier Doug Ford, for the upcoming election, that people will make wise choices Leaders will be elected who will honor human rights and seek justice for all. For the leaders of the churches as they're beginning to reopen for public worship. For Andrew, our diocesan bishop. Priscilla, our area bishop. Reverend Kim, our parish priest. And for this parish of St. Andrew, we give thanks for our dedicated wardens who are working to prepare the church for reopening, checking all protocols, and that the technology is in place to support us. Let us pray for this community of Alliston and the surrounding area, for all the communities of faith. For Rick Milne, the mayor, and for all people in their daily life especially the young families who are preparing for a return to school. Give them peace in their uncertainties and protect them. 
We remember all in need, the homeless and the unemployed, those devastated by fires, tornadoes, earthquakes, and floods. May they receive help and encouragement to rebuild their homes and their lives. At this time, we pray for the sick, the troubled, and the bereaved, especially those in our parish family. I invite you now to name those known to you. May they receive God's peace, which passes our understanding. We pray for the safety and protection of all who bring comfort, care, and healing, especially the first responders in Afghanistan and Haiti and the firefighters across the world, for the medical workers fighting to contain the COVID-19 pandemic and to heal those who are suffering. Loving God, continue to watch over us and care for us. Fill us with your love that through us it will overflow into the community. We ask all these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name. Increase in us true religion. Nourish us in all goodness and of your great mercy, keep us in the same through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Gathering all our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Let us pray over our gifts. Merciful God, receive all we offer you this day. Give us grace to love one another, that your love may be made perfect in us. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and evermore. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>